Well, good afternoon. It's a long haul tanker, straight razor shaving with long haul tanker. And it is Monday, the 20th of March, 2023 at approximately 1620 or uh, 420 PM central time. And as you can probably tell from my background that I am in the driver's lounge, driver's lounge restroom. Uh, and we're going to do the straight razor shave from here this evening. It's been an interesting day, but first let me say, if you're joining me on YouTube, I say thank you and uh, uh, hit the like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you so desire. Then go on over to The Shaving Cadre, www.theshavingcadre.com and join in the conversation over there if you have an interest in wet shaving, uh, straight razor shaving, honing, all things wet shaving related and beyond. It's like a universe. And I appreciate one thing uh, that, uh, not the only thing, but one of the things that Spider recently said, and that is it's, it's, a, it's a family, it's camaraderie, uh, activities, Zoom calls, which I must confess, I missed yesterday's Zoom call. I was at home and I usually don't get to uh, participate in the Zoom calls when, I, when I'm at home because it's my wife's time, you know? I'm out on the road so much, gone and away. And so when I am home, uh, she has every right to uh, claim my time when I'm home. And that's, you know, you husbands understand that, you know? So anyway, uh, let me introduce the equipment for uh, today that we're going to use. And I'm kind of going a little uh, off schedule, uh, uh, even minimalist, if you will, uh, sort of, sort of. Uh, I'm starting a new roll up. I'm starting a new soap. And rather than do that here uh, on the yard in the driver's lounge restroom, I will do that out on the road once I get going. I do have a new load uh got the call day before yesterday hey how would you like to go to calgary alberta and i said oh yeah love it uh been up to that plant that we go to up there many a times and so many a times over the last 10 years and so uh, i know where it's at i know how exactly how long it's going to take to get there barring any obstacles i know exactly where my stops are got to hit my marks and as I often say, I love it when a plan blows up. That's why I'm here tonight. Um, my trailer was supposed to be ready. It was being preloaded by another driver and there were difficulties in the plant. The plant was unable to get the trailer loaded for whatever reason. And rather than being ready to go at 12 noon, uh, the trailer did not come back to the yard until 1700, 5 p.m. And uh, I told my dispatch manager, I'm not leaving till the morning. So uh, that's fine because uh, most plants in Canada are closed on the weekend. Uh, and I asked him, I said, do they take weekend deliveries? And he said, no, I'm positive. They're going to be closed on the weekend. So it'll be Monday before it gets there. And so I've got lots of time. Uh, mustn't dottle, but I will be there uh, with bells on <laughs> likely 0700 Monday morning and cross into Canada uh, midday uh, Sunday sometime. But those are troubles for tomorrow, you know. And so in the meantime, we're just going to go through our paces, take our leisure going up there and uh, perhaps even have time for a 34 hour restart once we get to Great Falls, Montana. I kind of use Great Falls, Montana and the new Love's Truck Stop there. Before that, it was the Flying J as kind of a, um, a staging area. From either of those two locations in Great Falls, Montana, it's five and a half hours to the truck stop that I go to in uh, Calgary. And uh, then it's just about 10 minutes from there to uh, uh, my delivery point, point the uh, plant that I go to. And so, I drive to that truck stop the night before delivery, five and a half hours. I go make delivery 
uh, come back to that truck stop in Calgary, change my clothes, get into my driving clothes instead of my plant clothes. Uh, and then I head back to uh, one of the truck stops in Great Falls, five and a half hours. And in so doing, I have rolled forward enough hours that I don't need to do a 34 hour restart on the road. But even though I may have already done one on this trip, I'm gonna follow the same routine as I always do uh, because that's where my truck stops are. I'm gonna hit my marks the way I hit my marks. Okay, so the equipment. Uh, so I'm going to Calgary and I'll see you along the way. Uh, with the various shaves that I will do. The uh, razor for this evening is the uh, Fox Cutlery razor that was generously given to me as a Christmas gift uh, exchange with uh, a scuttle soap. And I thought I'd pull this out tonight. This razor is on permanent standby in my collection. So I've got my roll up, but I have this one set aside, bring it in with me every time, uh, except that uh, I don't always use it. So I use it from time to time, oftentimes off camera, but I'll use it on camera tonight. It's a wonderful uh, little 5 8 uh, Fox Cutler. It's got a very handsome set of scales on it. Um, and it was honed up uh, by me uh, using the uh, Zulu gray stone with slurry down to water. And so this is a lovely um, uh, and crisp by my dad. Uh, for the uh, soap tonight, we're not starting the new, uh, I will tell you it's a sterling soap, but we're not starting that, that one tonight. We're going to use the CO Bigelow uh, in a tube. Uh, it's the uh, eucalyptus and it's a, it's a delightful, uh, again, a standby soap, a backup soap that I use. Uh, and not use regularly. Also, I use, I always bring two brushes. If you watch me regularly, you know that I bring two brushes with me on the road, what I call an A-lister and a B-lister. Well, I'm using my B-lister tonight, um, which is the, uh, uh, if you can hardly call it a B-lister, it is a, oh, a Shave Mac Americana. The only reason I put it down to my B-list, uh, it's a class A brush, no doubt about it, but uh, it's too small. Uh, and so as soon as I got it, I go, I was disappointed and I remain disappointed uh, that it is as small as it is. It's a 24 millimeter knot, but the handle is so small and the, the loft on the, on the bristles is so, on the knot is so small, uh, short would be a better word. And so, eh, and it serves as a B-lister. It gets its regular workout, you know, but. And so what I'm going to do, let me put some water on the fat. I got too much oozing out. Hang on a second here. Let me put that in the brush. Okay, there we go. So do let me make mention of my fellow shavers over at uh, the Shaving Cadre that make content and videos, particularly straight razor videos. And that's uh, Handle Barber Dave, uh, Major Rich, Nurse Dave. Whoops. Uh, Bill M, The Cutthroat Journey, Shoot in the Shave, uh, we got the, uh, the uh, new one that we're adding to the list and that is the Luxury Shave Hobbyist. And so uh, I'll put all of these into the description of the uh, video. Um, following the last, uh, the next one is um, uh, Spider Shaves, I believe. Uh, it's Spider, so Spider Shaves, uh, and then uh, a Scuttle Soap. And uh, uh, last but not least is um, uh, Lukey3262 Matt. You'll find him on YouTube as uh, uh, 
straight face. Uh oh, I'm going to blow this. <laughs> uh, straight face shaved, I think it is. You'll find them. Lukey 3262. A little too much water going there. If I have to put some more soap on, I will. I'm not too worried about that. I got plenty of these tubes, green tubes in reserve. Now, CO Bigelow was a brand label for uh, uh, um, uh, not Bed Bath & Beyond, but the, their companion store. Bath and Beyond. Um, and I don't know what I, I think they still have some items under that label with the store, uh, but not the soap. And it's got a very crisp eucalyptus scent to it, a nice uh, sensation on the skin. There's still plenty of soap in the in the brush. And so we'll bring the uh, the travel equipment out once we get on the road and start traveling. So I expect to be in Great Falls by Friday night um, or late in the day Friday, maybe late afternoon, and uh, sit there for the weekend, uh, do a 34-hour restart, and then uh, cross the border on Sunday and get up to the truck stop five and a half hours later. All right, here we go. Fox Cutlery. And let's see if my eyes can make it out. I'm looking for, look, um, nope, I can't see it. I mean, I see the letters, but I can't make out the words. Huh. Anyway, Fox Cutlery, and there's a little image of a fox there by the pin. Anyway, here we go. I, oh, I got about 36, better than 36 hours of uh, whiskers on my face. I shaved yesterday off camera. So I came down to the yard today, knowing that the trailer was supposed to be here, ready to go at 12 noon. I uh, woke up at 7.30 this morning and
and got my food bags ready. My wife had uh, prepared and packed my food and I put it into the carry bags that I bring with me to the truck. I got to the yard about, I left the house at about 8.15 and got down here at the yard at about no later than 9.30. Traffic was good, no stop and go. And when I got here and checked in, they said that there was delay down there and all day. And so my company's real good about letting, not letting drivers sit around and not get paid. Um, and so I did what my dispatch had instructed me to do. That was be here ready to go by 12 noon. I did, I'm now on their time. I've been with the company long enough too and worked with them in many a similar situations where a load blows up and uh, they just say, get on the road and get going and let us know when you'll be there. Okay. That's why I ask all the questions that I do. Some people may find it annoying, but I wanna know every little nuance about a load so that when a question, when, when a problem comes up, I can say, do they take deliveries on the weekend? I wanna know the answer to that because that means, that means a lot of things. But one thing it means is that they'll, if I can get to Great Falls by Friday, then they can take me on on, on Sunday, because that lasts five and a half hour stretch. And you never go into a delivery on a driving day. Driving days are for driving, they're not for delivering, they're not for loading. You save yourself a lot of trouble by simple rules.
Yeah, I've got a list of them. My little simple rules that I live by on the road and you can't load and go on the same 500 miles on the same day. That's asking for trouble. You don't deliver at the end of a driving day. You're asking for trouble. Your time expires. You're stuck in the plant. You can't move the truck. Oh, you got to go. And they won't let you say on the property when you make these deliveries. I remember one time I was I remember one time I was coming into um, Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, I'd been driving all day, and I had three or four hours left on my drive clock, and I was within an hour of my delivery, which was scheduled for the next morning. <clears throat> and uh, got a call from my dispatch, and they wanted me to go ahead and go on in and deliver and I flatly refused to do it and oh that caused some stink with some people but not with safety no he was right to make that call because you can't if I'd gone in there and it typically we allot the uh, receiver two hours to unload a trailer but that doesn't always happen. And uh, frequently it does not happen. It turns into three hours, turns into four hours, turns into five hours. And although today's delay was on a loading and not a delivery, it's the same equipment. It's the same processes and procedures that are involved. And uh, what can happen in a delay that can happen in one on one side of the load can happen on the other side of the load on the delivery. So no, I, I said no. It was one of my early bold, <laughs> bold moves, you know, who what's going to happen from that? And so, and sure enough, it, it was late, not late, but it was, you know, pushing three, four o'clock. In the afternoon, I went on into the truck stop to park, and it was already starting to get busy. Yes, there were parking places open and available, but they were filling up quick. And so if I had made my delivery, even if there had not been a delay, if I had gone in there at four or five o'clock, two hours to unload, it would have been six or seven o'clock in the evening before I would have gotten out. And that is a reckless time to go into a truck stop to find a parking place. Your odds as you get closer to sundown or after sundown, your odds precipitously fall in being able to find a place to park. And I learned that lesson a long time ago. I hadn't quite put it into words, into a formal principle, but I always ask the question, of my safety manager now that I've, over the years now that I've thought about it and articulated it and put it into words, 
I say, do you want me to play a high percentage game or a low percentage game? If you want me to play the low percentage game, what's your backup plan for me? <laughs> they can never answer that. So I play the high percentage game. That's why a lot of drivers, some of drivers like to drive at night is that they think that, and it don't make any difference which end of the day you start on or end on. It might be easier to find a parking place at uh, mid-morning, 10, 11 o'clock, because you've driven all night. Now here's something for you guys that have written to me and told me that you're interested in truck driving and getting a CDL and so forth. And that is you've got to decide about your body clock. Can you drive all night and not find yourself tired or exhausted or nodding off, you know, at 2 a.m. because you started at 9 p.m. or you know, 10, 11, 12 p.m. Or do the constant rolling of 10 hours sleeps, uh, sleep patterns. Um, they allow you 10 hours if, if, for your uh, uh, sleeper birth break at night. And so you go to bed, let's just say midnight, uh, and you're allotted 10 hours, you're up at 10 a.m., you drive for 11. So now you're at 11 p.m. And uh, I'm just rough balling it. Uh, uh, you're at 11 p.m. and you head to the bunk to take your 10 hour break. And so now you're up at 9 a.m. and you just keep rolling 10 when you go to bed uh, for your sleeper birth break, you're rolling. So you go to bed. And so that, that shift is continually getting earlier because you get two hours less than when you went to bed the night before.
I've worked with two companies over the last, this one and uh, another. that do have some care toward um, the, uh, I think I'm gonna say this right, I hope, <laughs> circadian sleep patterns of the human body. You know, and, uh, and I'm always talking to my safety manager about sleep patterns and sleeper birth and, and I've made it pretty well known that I'm a daytime driver because I like being in bed asleep at 2 a.m. just like everybody else. And uh, But the good news is this load I'm going to be on has got because it's a blown load and because I've already been given the go-ahead to leave tomorrow morning at my, my uh, suggestion, if you will. And nobody's looking over my shoulder. No, just let them know when you can be there. Oh, okay, good. I like that. You know, I don't abuse that. I don't take advantage of it. I know what the parameters are. I know they're closed on the weekend. I know as of right now, uh, if I leave tomorrow morning, uh, Tuesday morning, I've got seven days to get there. And I only need, um, going from here to Calgary is a, uh, a five day drive delivery on the morning of the sixth day. I've been doing it for years, just like that. I got my stops all uh, I know where my stops are. I've been stopping at the same place on this route. And there's no need to change it. So many of our routes on the extra long loads, Canada loads, are all pretty much the same. Uh, we don't have a lot of new routes that we run. The customers that we have that we service are big name companies. You'd recognize them immediately if I said them.
I love this little razor. The uh, steel on it is pretty thin, like a, a Philharmonica is thin. And uh, you can just feel the pop, 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 pop when you're hitting the whiskers. And who was I watching earlier today? Uh, Martin Wood, I think it was. Great shave, great shaver. Excellent tools he has. He makes a nice presentation. And uh, what was it he said? Well, I don't know, but there's a nice plug for Martin. <laughs> I'll think of it in a little bit. Very nice. I plan to be in Guthrie, Oklahoma tomorrow night, uh, York, Nebraska, Wednesday night, from York, Nebraska to uh, uh, Casper, Wyoming, for Thursday night, Casper, Wyoming to Great Falls, Montana, to the loves there, uh, at York, at the Petros, I often do a uh, shave in a public restroom. With no camera, of course. And then in Casper, since it'll be less than 24 hours or about 24 hours, I'll probably not do a shave in Casper. And then get on to uh, Harden for Thursday night, uh, likely. I said Harden, that's not true, Great Falls. And uh, spend two days there doing a restart. And I'll probably shave twice while at the Loves in uh, Great Falls.
but I like going to Calgary. I like that particular run very much. I sometimes jokingly say I like going to Canada, and I, but I love coming out of Canada. Very nice. Got that eucalyptus sensation going on, like a menthol sensation going on on my face, which feels nice. So I live about 50 miles, Spring, Texas, to here to um, my company's terminal yard, which is, if you ever look at a map, Spring, Texas, down to Hobby International Airport, we're on the south side of uh, Hobby International Airport. And so it was not, it would not have been um, convenient to drive home and spend the night at home and get up early again the next morning just to come down here to leave it. See, because I want to leave early tomorrow morning too, uh, about 4.30, 5 o'clock. So I'll just lay here. I've got food in the truck and But the nice thing about being on the yard, if I wanted to go get in my personal vehicle and go to a restaurant, if I wanted to order some pizza in, I could do all of that. But wife tends to frown on that, so I don't do that. Which is fine because 
I love her cooking. Why should I turn my nose up at that? And if I run out of food on the road, I can do the same thing. That is to say, order food in. So I was home, got in on Thursday late in the afternoon, drove home, got walked in the front door at about 6 p.m., 1800. And uh, so I was home, slept in my own bed Thursday night, but I was home all day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and came here to the yard this morning, uh, which is nice. Three days off is good between loads. It's a little quicker than what's been happening lately over the last a uh, year, almost two years now. I did check the weather along the way. It is supposed to snow Friday when I'll be in Great Falls. It's supposed to snow in Calgary. N no snow forecast for Great Falls on Friday. And then there is snow in the forecast for Cheyenne for Wednesday. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Never a good sign.
But the good news is it's getting later into the winter. Uh, spring's supposed to spot, uh, pop here pretty soon. Maybe, I think it's even tomorrow, the 21st. Uh, and so weather's going to be getting better. Now, if you didn't know, the uh, CO Bigelow in the green tube is made by Parasso. And so if you're using Parasso green, same stuff, same people. Just a private label dispensing. As I say, I don't believe that uh, Bath and Body Works. There it is. I got it out. I messed up on it earlier. Uh, I don't believe Bath and Body Works uh, still carries the shave soap by co bigelow now they carry other items that have the co bigelow name on it
we'll come back to that in a little bit. Just water.
Yep, that feels good. All right, let's rinse it off and see what we got. I'm gonna run some hot water here in my bowl. All right, I think we're done with the face shape. Let's move on to the head shape real quick. Quick, I don't do anything quick. All right, we'll set the Fox cutlery aside. Thank you, Scuttle Soap. Delightful brush, or brush, razor.
I pulled all the soap out of the uh, out of the knot, get it up on the head. pretty good. So I had a haircut on Friday, I think it was, and um, no, maybe over the weekend. All right, we're using a union razor. Oops, forgot a step. Gotta clear my forehead. Union Razor was honed up on a uh, shaft and glass regression up to 8K and uh, finished on an Arkansas. Uh, given that the handle is white, it was probably on the translucent or the true hard. And if you've seen my stones, you'll know that that true hard is a variegated white and black, not a translucent. Uh, has a uh, USGS rating of, what is it, uh, 3.5, I think it is, is that, it slips my mind right now, but I think that's about right, 3.5 or better. Of course, that's where all the translucent, hard black come in at is 3.5 or whatever that number is on Dan's Whetstone website about the uh, USGS rating. Maybe it's 2.5, I forget, but 3.5 sounds right. And I don't quibble in my discussions over which one's better? You know, translucent. The language has been confirmed to me on the website. Extra fine, ultra fine. They claim that one is extra fine, the other one is ultra fine, is marketing language and has nothing in reality to do with. which one's better. I know that doesn't please a lot of people. Well, I can just feel the difference. Okay, that's your stone. You know, or sometimes I take it to whatever that test is for buoyancy or whatever it is uh, to just test the density. And it's all anecdotal. The best that anyone can say about any stone of a Dan's or any, for that matter, any Navacolite, Novacolite, is that in order for it to rate as a true hard, hard black, or translucent, is that it has to exceed, meet or exceed that, whatever that rating is, 3.5, maybe 2.5, I'm not positive, but. Of course, it's been several years since 
I've had those conversations with those gentlemen. They, the, the father, uh, Dan, and the, the son, Steve. I spent a little bit of time with Steve, a couple hours. When I stopped by there, I called and said, hey, can I turn, can I come over and visit with you? And they said, yeah, sure, come on. And it was a great time. And we talked about the Stones and their relationship to straight razors. And they didn't have a lot of knowledge about how their Stones, other than they know that there is quite a hobbyist interest in their Stones as it relates to straight razors, but they don't know the practical about how we use them for straight razors. Well, if you burnish the stone this way, and oh no, you shouldn't burnish the stone. Well, wait a minute. They don't know how we use them with straight razors. And some people in the straight razor community have taken that as, you know, I, I don't want to shoot at them because they've actually did the hands-on work. You know, it's... The thing about an Arkansas is it'll do what you want it to do. However you prepare the surface of the stone, if a little rougher, a little finer, it'll do what you want it to do. There is no right, there is no wrong, there is no good, better, or best. Those are superlative words in grammar indicating rank. Um, It's just what suits you.
you know, shaving with a straight razor is so much fun. Whether you've honed it yourself or, or, or not, you know, you'll learn as part of the deal is that eventually you will learn because you want to maintain your own razors unless somebody's doing it for you for free well that feels good but straight razors are a lot of fun taking an open edge running across your face your head your neck and being able to get a shave and maybe this is what Martin Wood was saying that I forgot earlier because he made mention of it in his video this morning. And that is there's nothing like a straight razor shave. It's second to none. How soft and smooth that makes your face feel. It's just, you know, here's a claim. You shave with a straight razor. Women can't keep their hands off your face. It's as good as any other claim, right? Shaving like how our great grandfathers shaved. Brings back all the nostalgia the vintage era, maybe even the notions of a simpler or even better yet, a better time in history. Well, when I get done here, after I do my post-shave cleanup, I'm gonna go hook up to my loaded trailer, which is now on the yard. I know where it's sitting. I don't, we got about, I don't know, two or 300 trailers sitting on the yard, but I watched them come in the gate and I watched where he parked. So it's not a big deal for me to go get hooked up and get ready for departure in the morning and then uh, close it down. Go have some dinner that my wife has made for me for the road. We're good. We're going to let it go with that. I think I've done an adequate job, if not a great job. And we'll do all this stropping and cleanup and everything that we've got to do once I get back up in the truck. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to say good night and you'll have a lovely evening and I will see you down the road.